G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear, you'll find crafting videos into costuming, you'll find DIY videos into furniture, and you'll find analysis into historical events, who are the main characters and why do things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, you might want to consider subscribing. So today we're going to have a look at the Make Your Own Medieval Danax Head. Really, really impressive piece of kit. Uh, I've been wanting one of these for a very long time. And um, I was really happy to receive this. This is a reenactment weapon for training and reenactment purposes. It has a dull edge of approximately three millimeters and the, uh, the edges of the axe are rounded down. It comes as the axe head, so you need to find your own haft. Um, I used a hoe handle, a oak hoe handle that I got from a local hardware store and I was able to shave off the sides with a hand plane and um, create a very sort of realistic uh, axe handle. Um, I like an oval shape which gives me that little bit of extra feedback into which way the axe head itself is pointing. But let's take a look at uh, a couple of the specs of the axe. Costs uh, $74.95. I think that's very reasonable. Um, certainly a lot less than you know a lot of the other sort of weapons that are available. Um, and, and this is really quite a nice piece of kit. It's very well made. Obviously from a modern EN45 steel uh, as opposed to sort of a um, medieval type of steel. Medieval steels did vary a lot uh, according to the actual individual blacksmith or weaponsmith, um, the geographical area and the time period. So different smiths could come up with different types of steel and I find that very, very interesting. Um, it is a Type M axe under the Peterson typologies uh, and we have examples uh, in the British Museum uh, which were located from a what we think was a Danish shipwreck during one of the attacks on London. Um, so therefore Vikings, true Vikings. Um, so London itself was held by many different cultures over time from the Britons through to the Saxons through to the uh, the Danes held it occasionally and the, the Saxons retook it occasionally. Ended up as a, I suppose, the English society uh, and then went through to obviously the Normans. Norwich Castle and the Cambridge Museum. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what else. These axes were used from the 10th through to the 13th centuries. Uh, and obviously, um, I guess the, the style of axe then evolved as armour evolved and types of combat evolved. They seem to have come across um, with the Danes, if you want to call them Danes, um, and, and Norwegian Vikings, if you want to call it that, um, uh, from the Byzantine so the, the Varangian Guard who a lot of the, the Vikings then went back to Scandinavia and then raided throughout Europe. Um, so there are examples of these found all throughout sort of Western and Northern Europe and they were introduced to, into England around the time of um, Sven Forkbeard and King Canute made famous by the Anglo-Saxon Huskarls. Uh, particularly against the Normans. Um, so the Huskals were, uh, I guess, a, an invention um, or a rebranding as much as anything under uh, King Canute and also Sven Forkbeard. But they were kept that way um, by uh, the King Edward the Confessor and then um, Harold Goodwinson took them to uh, the, the, the Battle of Hastings. And then these axes were made famous in the Bayou Tapestry. Interesting, um, I had been asked recently online uh, by someone uh, whether I thought these were an anti-cavalry weapon. They are not, um, definitely, definitely not. You can use a dagger against a horse if you really want to. Um, a horse is, you know, 500, 600 kilograms worth of um, free-spirited animal. So you can't really use something like this against a horse. I mean, obviously people did, but um, it, it's, it's not designed that way. We do know that these were incredibly effective weapons against people in armor. The amount of kinetic energy you can build up in a swing and the different ways that you can use this ax make it incredibly interesting. I'm gonna be doing a video on that next week about the different cutting styles and the different um, 
ways that this particular axe can be used. Please tune in for that. Uh, I think that's going to be a very interesting video. However, um, so this axe can be used very much as a close quarter weapon inside buildings and farms and, and towns and cities and so on, but it's also very much, um, you know, a, a, a weapon at, um, once you've got the full swing in your hands at the very back of the axe, then you have a, uh, an incredibly powerful weapon and it, it, you can see images in the Bayou Tapestry of a Huskal taking off someone's head I think with one of these and also um, there's stories and, and descriptions about uh, a Huskal taking off a knight's leg and going well into the horse as well. So very powerful weapons um, and, and very interesting weapons. So I'm giving this weapon a 9 out of 10. Make Your Own Medieval is a very, very good company. I really like them. Uh, small business, but uh, very responsive. When you place your orders, they're always shipped very quickly. They're good communication skills, and um, the quality of what they're producing is, is really fantastic. So solid, solid 9 out of 10. Really happy with it, and totally recommend this to you. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you in my next video. Thank you.